This is 15 Minutes of Freedom. I'm your host, Elite Life Optimization Coach Ryan Nidell, and today is day six of Wellness Week here during this last stretch of 15 Minutes of Freedom. So we have covered a plethora of things this week. Right, you think if you look back and if you haven't caught some of the earlier episodes, I'm going to encourage you to go back and take a look at them, take a listen to them. We have everything from cal- caloretic surplus and deficit into eating for your blood type. We have hormone optimization. We have some simple workouts. Got a little bit of everything. But now let's really crank it up a notch. All right, this is a topic that I'm, of course, passionate about, and we'll call that biohacking. Right, and at its core basis, don't let that term turn you off. Biohacking in its entirety is nothing more than really returning back to what we were originally here to do. You and I as human beings walking this planet, going to bed when the sun goes down, getting up when the sun comes up, bathing in cold water if we bathe at all, eating sporadically, doing things that would have been just how we had to exist to survive. In today's modern world, think about it for just one moment. We have so many things to make our lives more convenient, but our bodies have not caught up to those conveniences. So, what happens? Right, of course, we as human beings are living longer than ever before. But as we covered in some earlier episodes, are we really living better? With obesity in the U.S. being above 63% currently? It could be said that we're not living better. And we're using pharma, right, major pharmaceutical companies, to increase the length of our lives. I would like you to consider just for one moment what it could be like if you adopted and adapted to some of these principles I'm going to share with you. Right, The very first one in biohacking to me is aligning your circadian rhythm. If you're not familiar with circadian rhythm, that is a natural sleep cycle that you and I both have. Now, there are no two circadian rhythms that are exactly the same in my opinion. However, there is certainly, certainly, some commonalities, right? When we really, really dive into sleep and what it is, have you ever noticed that when the sun goes down, there's a moment of time where you become more tired? Of course you have, right? But we do everything we can to fight through that because for most of us, especially if you're listening here in the U.S., right? the sun goes down in the middle of summer sometime around nine, Sun comes up sometime around six. Well, if you're like me, you don't really want to go to bed at nine, so you fight through it. You spend time in front of the television, which is unnatural blue light. You spend time maybe reading, but of course it's on a Kindle or an iPad. More unnatural blue light. You spend time aimlessly scrolling through social media. More unnatural blue light. And that actually begins to convince your body that it's not time to go to sleep, that it's time to, time to wake up. Because blue light is actually more present in the spectrum in the morning. Yes, when the sun's coming up, you get infrared light and you get a series of blue light that comes in at the same time, right? Before that sun is high in the sky, there's blue and infrared rays there. And so when you do things like look at blue light at nine o'clock at night to sedate yourself, you are convincing your body it is time to wake up. So what happens for most of us and potentially happens to you is you get what we refer to as our second wind. You get that energetic lift. And of course, on the second wind, you don't want to go to bed. Right now it's 11, 11, 30, 12 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the morning, I just can't go to sleep. I don't understand. I would encourage you to consider phasing out blue light as the sun goes down. 
I realize how difficult this may be for you. Most of us are looking for time to unwind and shut down, and in my opinion, sedate into the evening. If you can't see yourself shying away from blue light, you're just like, there's no way I could pull myself away from a television. There's no way I could pull myself away from my phone or my iPad or my Kindle. I get it. Right? I'm not going to give you a hard time. But do yourself a favor. Hop on truedark.com and bear, buy a pair of red glasses. And I don't say True Dark, right? I don't have a sponsorship with them. I'm not affiliated with them. I do believe in their product, but it's also because I don't know very many other types. I know there's a company called Ra Optics, R A O P I T C S. That's pretty good. I know there's a lot of glasses out there, but make sure they have the red tinted lens that will block out almost all of the visual, visible blue spectrum. These are not good lights or good glasses to wear when you're driving. But this will begin to filter that blue light that knocks out your circadian rhythm. Right? Let's say we've gotten to that point. Let's say that it makes sense and you're ready to go. What happens for most of us or would have happened to us in prehistoric times when the sun went down? The temperature dropped. Right? There's no more ambient sun in the sky. There's nothing to heat the earth. The same thing should happen for your body. The ideal sleeping temperature has been proven to be somewhere between 65 and 68 degrees Fahrenheit. I would encourage you to set a timer on your thermostat that by 930, you begin to blow cold air into your bedroom. Ladies, I know most of the time you say, gosh, that's just too cold. That's just too cold. I understand. And it might be a little bit too cold for you. You you have an internal thermostat that's different than we have as men. right? You have to be ready to keep a child warm until your bodies operate slightly differently. However, across the board, this is still the best way to navigate sleep cycles. Right? And then, of course, we can get into all the extreme things. right? Where is, where is your cell phone located? Do you put it next to your nightstand like most people? Do yourself a favor, put it in the bathroom, put it in another room, set the alarm clock so you have to get out of bed. There are EMFs, electromagnetic fields that come off of every device that we have in our house, including your router. Yes, that internet router you have in your house, you should unplug it or turn it onto airplane mode on your phone right, to not pick up the Wi-Fi signals before bed. All these things will increase your sleep efficiency and quality. If you really want to get down to it, grab yourself a set of blackout shades for your window, right? Blackout curtains. You'd be surprised, most of us, probably you, how much ambient light really comes in from the cities that we live in. All these things were not how we were designed. If you've ever been out in the country and camped, and you see how beautiful the stars look in the sky and how it seems so black, of course it does. Right? There's, no, there's no light coming from anywhere. And so these are really the things that we need to mimic. Right? But as we mimic these things, then we get in the morning. right? That sun coming up. Like, man, sun rises at 5.30 or 6. Yeah, absolutely. That should be the time, give or take, your body's ready to wake up. Now, I understand it could take a few weeks to get to this point, but when that sun rises, you should be anxiously looking forward to getting out of bed. If not, I will have you consider that you might in fact not have your circadian rhythm dialed in. So when that light comes in through the cracks in the window and you get yourself out of bed, right, one of the best things you can do to prime your body for the day is take your shower, but then end your shower with cold water and actually go back and forth. And I've recorded episodes on this before, and I don't want to belittle this topic, but wash yourself off, then put yourself into cold water, cold as you can possibly have it be. Right? It might start with 20 seconds, then 30, then 40, then 50, then eventually get to minutes of cold water, and there's no more impact. The highest end answer is, right, it makes you mentally more tough. 
If you can handle stepping into cold water that you know is cold, and the majority of us don't like to be cold, of course, it shows you got a little, little gumption to you, right? That you can handle more things that come throughout the day. But we're really going to take it way back, right? When we would jump into water in those prehistoric times, that water did not have a hot water tank associated with it. It just didn't. And so it would have been cold. And that cold primes our mitochondria. The part of you that wants to jump out of the cold shower is the half-charged or half-dead mitochondria that are in your body. And this pushes them out. This kills them off. And your body regenerates new. And when you have all new mitochondria, you're actually able to produce and maintain more energy throughout the day. It is highly impactful. Especially if you're one of those... If you're like I used to be, right, and you hit that 2 o'clock lull, right, that one thirty or 2 o'clock, you're tired in the afternoon, this will start to repair that. This will start to make that go away. Okay, so now, now we're building some momentum. We got some sleep stuff dialed in. We got a first morning habit or ritual dialed in, and here we are. Life is starting to move and shake, but you should be now showered and ready. This is where things get really great. If you can get out and get just 15 minutes in the morning of natural ultraviolet light that's hitting your skin, right? So ideally you'd be outside without clothes on, but I realize that's not going to be possible for all of us. But certainly men in a pair of shorts, I mean, I guess women, you could do that as well, but something that would be appropriate for the neighborhood or area that you live in, but having the most skin possible exposed, all right, so instead of jumping on that phone right away, instead of turning on the TV, head outside. Now I realize many, many people listening, perhaps you right now are saying, man, I need my cup of coffee though. You have enough cold showers and that cup of coffee is not going to feel so important. But if you're going to lean into coffee, I highly recommend considering creating a bulletproof type of coffee. Now, of course, there is bulletproof brand. And that's mold-free, it's natural, it's organic, the coffee beans are X, Y, and Z. Right? I'm not a coffee promoter, I don't care what type of coffee you drink. I do care that it's mold-free, natural, organic, and as healthy as can be. But once you make this coffee, if you were to blend the coffee in a blender with a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half of either organic natural butter or ghee butter, G-H-E-E, add a little Cylon cinnamon to it, C-E-Y-L-O-N, add a little bit of brain octane oil or MCT oil. Brain octane oil simply has one of the variant strands of acid removed from the medium chain triglycerin oil, which makes it less volatile on your stomach. So you push forward, you do all that, you blend it up, and the coffee will go from the typical dark brown into this really light caramel-like color. That's when you know it's ready. And what has actually happened is it's created the fourth phase of water called easy water. And easy water is required to maximize mitochondria efficiency, which is really all that we're trying to do. Increasing mitochondria efficiency will give you more energy. It will help you metabolize fat more efficiently. And it will actually decrease inflammation and has been proven to increase the length of your life. So maybe coffee doesn't have such a ritualistic nature to it, but perhaps it does now because you make the coffee, it's... It's easy water, right? You had the cold shower to prime your mitochondria for the day to kill off the dead ones. And now you're outside like literally charging your batteries. Sun is hitting your body. It's, it's low in the sky, so it's not burning you. you. Drink your coffee outside. Maybe you're walking around on your back patio, sitting in a chair. I personally like to get up and do some stretching, do some things like that. Now, you might be saying, it doesn't always sun. It's not always sunny where I live. I understand that too completely. Right? So in the studio and in our home, we have an a red light treatment. Right? I use Juve. They're the company that I have found to be beneficial for me. That's J-O-O-V-V. Right? And they make multiple different sizes, multiple different units, multiple different everything. Really, there's some scientific research out that shows that there are lower flicker rates and lower EMF devices available than Juve. Right? You stay away from flicker rate, you stay away from EMFs, they are all frying your mitochondria. So it's kind of this back and forth. However, I've used Juve now for the better part of a year, 
and absolutely love it. Only have positive things to say, but if you do some research, there are a bunch of different infrared lights out there. So if it's too cold or it's not sunny, you get 15 or 20 minutes of red light exposure. These things together, if all you did was alter your evening pattern and then alter your morning ritual, I'm not asking you to go to bed earlier. I'm not asking you to get up earlier. What I'm encouraging you to do is do this more efficiently and to understand why. Right again, this biohacking movement is nothing more than returning back to the source, how you and I were created. These are things that are incredibly beneficial. These are things that will extend the quality of your life, will extend the time of your life, increase the quality of your life, give you more energy, make you more efficient, and really just make life more fun to live. And of course, we, we now get into workouts and all the things that you or I would know. But one of the biggest things I want to encourage you to do is the same thing that I'm doing right now. The human body was not designed to sit for eight hours a day. Go all the way back to when we were cavemen yet once more. We would have got up, right? The sun came up, we would have, you know, commiserated with the tribe. We would have got out and walked around and tried to find some nuts, some berries, some food if we were hungry. Men, we would have probably got back together, went out and hunted something. Women would have sat around and done what the women would have done. But everybody would have been mobile. We weren't sitting. So, doing something easy like buying a $190 stand-up desk riser and a $30 pad starts to realign so many things in our body. And it's going to be uncomfortable. You're going to be tired the first times you do this. That's a sad state of affairs. Right? I'm in shape. And I take great pride in how, how hard I work. I still get tired from standing up at this desk for 8 to 10 hours a day. Maybe you say, okay, well, where I work at, I can't get a stand-up desk. What you can do is make sure 10 minutes out of every hour, you stand up and walk around. You absolutely can do that. And then I will even push forward one more step into this biohacking type of ideology and encourage you to consider some sort of intermittent fasting. Really more of just a strategic eating plan. Right? You think again. Back in these prehistoric times, there wasn't food in a refrigerator. If we didn't go out and hunt and gather, we weren't eating. And so that's part of what this is, right? Going out and and hunting and gathering would mean that maybe we don't eat till noon or one. And we're certainly done eating before the sun goes down because we wouldn't want to leave the safety of the tribe. So having somewhere between seven and eight hours, quote unquote, on in eating food, And the rest of the day, quote unquote, off will again help decrease inflammation in your body. Inflammation is the key cause of every disease known to man. Just Google it. Right? So we have mitochondria efficiency that's going to give you increased energy that's going to help decrease inflammation. We then also have decreased inflammation, which will increase longevity of life and quality of life, and decrease your likelihood of getting a life-threatening disease. Now, stress is also a part of this. Right? So I would be remiss if I don't share one quick biohack for stress. That biohack is something called box breathing. I don't necessarily love the term, but I understand why it exists. You see, throughout the day, our parasympathetic nervous system and our sympathetic nervous system get hyper, right? We're, we're fight or flight. We're looking around. The stress of the day get to us. And so what do you do? How do you calm that down? My friend, I can assure you it's not leaving work at five o'clock and going to the bar and sedating yourself with alcohol. That's a low vibration, low frequency way to live. What we can do is the moments of stress and the way that we feel, you know, a little out of sorts is breathe in calmly through your nose for four seconds. Nice, steady, consistent. Upon that fourth second, hold the breath in for four additional seconds. Now slowly, out through the mouth, allow that air to escape 
for yet again four more seconds. And then in the complete absence of air, leave your body without for four more seconds. So it will take you 16 seconds to complete this cycle. And I would encourage you to complete this 10 times in a row. Right, so in 160 seconds, give or take three minutes, you will completely change the way that your nervous systems are firing. More importantly, the byproduct of that from tracking with my whoop and my aura, from me doing that periodically throughout the day at least three times, I've had a massive increase in heart rate variability. Heart rate variability essentially ends up being the length between heartbeats. I don't know about you, but in my world, if I can get my heart to have less beats per minute and have the space in between beats more, be more efficient and effective, that means the thing that's pumping blood through my body is not working quite so hard on a day-over-day basis. And yet again, my stress level is going to decrease and my inflammation is going to decrease and my mitochondria efficiency is going to increase. And poof, just like that, I have a chance of living longer. And even if I don't live longer, what I will do is live better in the moment. Because my friend, I have one final thing to share with you. In today's now economy, the now society that we live in, it's very difficult for most of us to avoid instant gratification. I say this particularly as it pertains to food. We pass drive throughs on every street. There's processed food in every grocery store in every aisle. And it becomes accustomed to the way that we live life. This is just what we do. We eat this way. I will encourage you just for one week that if you can't pick it from the ground, pull it from a tree, or stab it with a spear, you don't eat it. You might say it's more expensive, right? We don't even have to go as far as organic right now. And I do believe there's a lot of benefit to organic, but that's a little hit or miss based off the fact of what the USDA says organic can really mean. If nothing more, make certain that you can pull it from the ground, right, to root vegetables, carrots, things like that, pluck it from a tree, so all the fruit that you could grab from a tree, or go out and kill it with a spear. Typically, for the majority of us, that means no dairy, no milk, no cheese. It means a plethora of other things that you're probably eating and consuming throughout the day, which could be the very reason why you are not sleeping, you lose energy, and you're just not as efficient as you could be. All right, this is... This is a great way to wrap up Wellness Week. We've covered a tremendous amount this week. And with this show ending at the end of June, I'm going to then dive next week into the voices that we have in our head. right? Psychology. The way that we talk to ourselves. Communication. Right, so, so really, I would have said for a long time, body being balanced in business is the way that we live life. I had an epiphany as I was coming home from Costa Rica this past weekend. And while Wake Up Warrior brought that to my attention, there's another man that I believe brought that to Wake Up Warrior's attention. His name is Kevin Nations. I don't know if this is true or not, and it doesn't much matter. What I do know is there's no part of what I offer and who I am that needs to recreate what has already been created. I want to certainly pay homage to those that have educated me, but really when it comes down to it, I don't look at life as body being balanced in business. I think that's a little confusing. I look at it as fitness, faith, family, and finances. It's really four Fs. So we covered fitness this week. This was wellness week. Next week, we're going to cover faith or spirituality or psychology in the way that all these pieces go together, followed by a week of communication, i.e. family, family being you as you are family to me, and that final week being finances that's tied into business.
to be the perfect way to end up wrapping up the month of June as it pertains to 15 Minutes of Freedom. And ultimately, the show is a, as a totality. Fear not, though, my friend. I've got four additional podcasts that are going to launch the 1st of July. I'll clue you more into those as we keep going down this path, but this medium for communicating information is not going to go away. It just simply has to evolve. If you're watching this on social media, you'll see behind me, I'm in a new office space with new opportunities, new things that are coming, and it is our consistent need. It's our soul's desire to consistently evolve and move. If there is part of you that feels stuck right now, realize that it's a feeling, it's not a fact. Because we can't be stuck. Everything is inherently in motion at all times, so you are progressing towards something greater even if you can't see it in the moment. With that, my friend, I appreciate you turning in, tuning in, turning on, and listening to Wellness Week on 15 Minutes to Freedom. Stay tuned next week as we start talking about faith, meditation, spirituality, and what all this means. Apply the lessons today and go out and get shit done.